Hi everyone, my name is Sabrina. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here. I hope you guys are joining me at my quarantine readathon that's going on right now. The lighting is a little bit weird. I filmed this video earlier and for some reason when I went to edit it, it had no sound. So it is 11.49 at night and we are refilming. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books to immerse yourself in to get you through quarantine. Because for me, I am on the front lines. I work in a hospital and once I leave work, I'd like to be able to dive into something that's going to make me forget about what's going on in the world around me. So today I'm going to be talking about 20 books to get you into a different world to forget about quarantine. Promise them you're not going to push the chair. Promise. Yes, mom, I promise. So the first book I chose for that is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I'm just going to start off by reading the synopsis for this book. Witty, romantic, and resistible from the first line to the last, The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue is the unforgettable esca escapade of Lord Henry Monty Montague, a charming young scoundrel who fully expects to carousel his way through the grand tour. However, Monty's plan for one last hurrah with his best friend and secret quest Percy quickly learns into a harrowing manhunt across 18th century Europe. So this book is about our prince named Monty. He is gay. Secretly in the closet it seems like gets himself into some trouble and we're kind of following him through 18th century Europe and for me anything in 18th century Europe I can just immerse myself in. I am obsessed with history so this is something I can definitely dive right into. So I would recommend this book. It is a pretty long read. We're talking about, talking about 400 pages for this book but we do have pretty big margins throughout the book so I think it'll be a pretty good read for a lot of you and I would highly recommend. The next book I have to get your mind out quarantine is Her Crown of Fire by Renee April. The synopsis is, in the dull everyday world, 17 year old Rose Evermore struggles to plan beyond her final year of high school, but when fire suddenly obeys her every command and her dreams predict the future, she begins hungry for more of the strange power. Under her dream's guidance, Rose lands in the fantasy realm of Lotharia with a tag along Tyson, her best friend since childhood, winds up there with her, just as confused and a hell of a lot more vulnerable. In Lotharia, Rose is welcomed and celebrated as a fire mage of the academy, while the very unmagical Tyson is forced into hiding under the threat of death from the masters of Rose's new school. As Rose's talent of fire magic draws unwanted attention and Tyson struggles to transition from high school student to blacksmith, Rose must find a way to return Tyson into their own world before the masters just and execute him at no matter the cost. So this book, we are kind of immersed into a Harry Potter-like world. Rose is just now experiencing with fire. She realizes that she can play with fire with her hands, so she sets fire to her kitchen at her house. Her and her mom get in this big argument, and she thinks, you know what? I hate my life, like maybe if I fall into this river I'll just be washed away and never be seen again. Her best friend jumps in after her and they are washed away to this magical world named Lotharia where she is welcome and she is praised as the new fire mage at the academy there and she is being taught how to use her powers but there are so many dark things that go along with Lotharia and she's starting to uncover them. Overall this book was pretty good when I read it but I think it would be a really good story to just kind of immerse yourself in and have a super quick read just to kind of get your mind off everything. The next book I have is a classic. It is Holes by Lewis. Wow! Holes by Lewis. Scratcher. I could never say his name right. Don't judge. The synopsis for this book is Stanley Yelnats is under a curse, a curse that began with his no good, dirty, rotten, pig stealing great great grandfather, and has since followed generations of Yelnats. Now Stanley has been unjustly sent to a boys' detention center, Camp Green Lake, where the boys build character by spending all day, every day, digging holes exactly five feet wide and five feet deep. There is no lake at Camp Green Lake, but there are an awful lot of holes. It doesn't take long for Stanley to realize there's more than character improvement going on at Camp Green Lake, and the boys are digging holes because the warden is looking for something, but what could there be buried under this dried up lake? Stanley tries to dig the truth in this initiative and darkly humorous tale of crime and punishment and redemption. So this is a middle grade book. I remember reading this in sixth grade and we watched the movie. For some reason I was obsessed with Squid, insert picture here, obsessed with him. I don't know why. I wrote like, I don't know however many of you wrote fanfics in elementary school and middle school, but I did. I wrote fanfics about Squid, and I'm sure all of my friends could tell you about it because I had them all read them. But I I think this is such a good middle grade book. I loved this book growing up, so I would definitely recommend it just as a short little read through the quarantine. The next book I have is Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. Yet another gay love story because for some reason I've been obsessed with them lately. So the synopsis for this book is actually on the inside jacket cover, so I'm gonna read it. Will Travis is the dream summer fling. He's fun, affectionate, kind, but just when Ollie thinks he's found the happy level after, summer vacation ends and Will stops texting him back. Now Ollie is one prince short of his fairy tale ending. To complete the fairy tale further, a family emergency has Ollie uprooted and enrolled in a new school across the country, which he minds a little less when he realizes it's the same school Will goes to. Ollie soon learns though that the sweet, uncomfortably queer guy he knew from summer isn't the same one attending Collinswood High. This Will's a class clown, closeted, and to be honest, a bit of a jerk. Ollie has no intention of pinning after the guy who clearly isn't ready for the relationship, especially when this new, bro jock version of Will seems to go from hot to cold every other week. But when Will starts coincidentally popping up in every area of Ollie's life, from music class to the lunch table, and Ollie finds his resolve weakening. The last time he gave Will his heart, he handed it back to him trampled and battered, and Ollie would have to be an idiot to trust him again. Right? 
Right. I actually listened to the audio of this book not too long ago. I think I finished it about two weeks ago. It was such a good story. We are following Ollie. He lives in California with his parents and when his aunt gets sick, they are uprooted across the country to Virginia where he meets Will. And he met Will over the summer before he had to move there and he had a sprint fling with him. When he moves back because of his aunt, he finds out that Will is closeted and he accidentally outs him to a couple of the girlfriends he becomes friends with. We are following the story of Will coming out of the closet, finding who he is, and it is a very sweet family-oriented story and I would really recommend it. It was such a quick read. You could actually find the audiobook version on Audible. It was just, I would highly recommend this book. It was very heartwarming. The next book I have is The Empire of Dreams by Ray Carson. I'm going to read the synopsis, which is once again, in the inside jacket cover. Run my sky. Red Sparkle Stone spent her entire childhood running from sinister sorcerers or the cold or hungry vicious masters. But now that's over, finally. At 16 years old, she is safe. She has a home despite everything, her veiled past, her odd name, and the mark of magic in her hair. Red is ad being adopted by the royal family. Until the Empress' greatest rival blocks the ad adoption. Until the Empress greatest rival blocks the adoption. Wow. Until the Empress's greatest rival blocks the adoption in a stunning political masterstroke and everything Red has worked for crumbles away. Red is not about to let herself or the Empress become a target again. Determined to prove her worth and protect her chosen family, she joins the Royal Guard, a world's most elite fighting force. As the plot against the Empress deepens, Red must uncover the enemy who has put her, her country, and everyone she loves at risk. If she can survive recruitment year, something no one has done before. This video is all about immersing yourself in worlds that you can just pick up the book and not put down. So the Empire Dreams, we are back in the Empire days of the medieval times. We're talking horse and carousel fighting. What is that called? Someone comment below and tell me what that's called because I don't remember. We are talking about that stuff. We are talking about medieval time. It's just, it, it's one of those books that I feel like you can immerse yourself into with no questions asked. It is a pretty long book. I actually got about halfway through. I'm not done reading this book yet, but I, it is so good so far and I would recommend it. The next book I have is After by Anna Todd. I'm actually reading this book for my quarantine readathon. I have not started it yet, but I'm excited to start it. So I'm just going to read the synopsis for this book on the back. Tessa is a good girl with a sweet, reliable boy from back home. She's got She's got direction, ambition, and a mother who's intent on keeping her that way. But she barely moved into her freshman dorm when she runs in a hardened. With his tussled brown hair, cocky British accent, tattoos, and a lip ring, Harden is cute and different from what she's used to. But he's also rude to the point of cruelty even. For all his attitude, Tessa should hate Harden, and she does. Until she finds herself alone with him in his room, and something about his dark mood grabs her, and when they kiss, it ignites within her passion she's never known before. He'll call her beautiful and then insist he isn't the one for her and disappear without a word. Despite the reckless way he treats her, Tessa is compelled to dig deeper to find the real heart of beneath all of his lies. She pushes her, he pushes her away again and again, and yet every time she pushes back and he only pulls her in deeper. Tessa already has a perfect boyfriend, but so why is she trying so hard to overcome her own pride and Harden's prejudice about nice girls like her, unless this could be love? So I actually read a good portion of this book when it was a Wattpad story about Harry Styles. I will stand by it that it was Harry Styles' love story because it was, because I read it. <laughs> So I'm actually really excited to reread this book. I heard there were quite a bit of differences between the Wattpad version and the publications version, which is words. But I'm excited to read this again, and I think this is just a story you could immerse yourself into. I think it's going to be one of the love stories that's really pull and give, and I think it's going to be such a good read. The next book I have is A Child Called It by Dave Peltzer. I'm sure all of you know what this book is. It's just one of those books that is hard, heart-wrenching, but I think it's a book everybody should read once in their life. So I'm just gonna read the synopsis on the back. A Child Called It is an unforgettable account of one of the most severe abuse cases in California history. It is the story of Dave Peltzer, who was brutally beaten and starved an emotionally unstable alcoholic mother. A mother who played tortures, unpredictable games, games that left him nearly dead. He had to learn how to play his mother's games in order to survive because she no longer considered him a son, but a slave, no longer a boy, but an it. Dave's bed was an old army cot in the basement and his clothes were torn and raunchy. When his mother allowed him the luxury of food, it was nothing more than soiled scraps and even the dogs refused to eat. The outside world knew nothing of his living night and he had nothing and no one to turn to but his dreams kept him alive dreams of someone taking care of him loving him and calling him their son so i actually had to read this book and his two other books for my careers and ed class which actually persuaded me to go to college and study what i'm trying to study this is really a heart-wrenching book it's really something that it takes a strong heart to read because there's a lot of graphic imagery in it so i really wouldn't recommend it for anything anyone younger than 16 I think it's a really adult book. The next book I have is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I'm gonna go ahead and read the synopsis. The circus arrives without warning, no announcements precede it. It is simply there when yesterday it was not. Within the black and white striped canvas tents, it's an utterly unique experience full of breathtaking amazements. It is called Lee Circus de Reves, and it is only open at night. But behind the scenes, a fierce competition is underway. A duel between two young magicians, Cecilia and Marco, who have been trained since childhood to expressively for this purpose by their mutual instructors. I mean, to both of them, this is a game in which only one can be left standing amidst the high stakes. Cecilia and Marco soon tumble into headfirst into love, setting off a domino effect of dangerous consequences and leaving the lives of everyone. From the performers to the patrons hanging in the balance. So this book is about 
two magicians. We are in this circus that just appears overnight. No one knows where it's going to land, but it's there. We are following their story of having to compete to be the best musician, which is going to end in death, but they fall in love. They don't want to kill each other. And this is such a good book to immerse yourself in because you are immersing yourself into the world of a carnival. And that is something I think a lot of us have not experienced because there are not very many running carnivals in the U.S. I feel like I think there's one that comes to my town every five years. But I think a lot of us have never experienced a carnival so I think this is such a good book to kind of immerse yourself in and this is this whole new world of twists and turns and magicians and it is just such a good book to be able to immerse yourself in. Anyway everyone makes mistakes right? Nope just me. Okay the next book I have is The Girl in the Blue Coat by Monica Hesse. I'm gonna read the synopsis. Find her before the Nazis do. Amsterdam, 1943. Henning spends her days finding and delivering salt after black market goods to paying customers. Nights hiding her true nature of her work from her concerned parents and every waking moment mourning her boyfriend who was killed in the Dutch front lines as the German army invaded. Her legal work keeps her family afloat, but Henning also likes to think of it as a small act of rebellion against the Nazis. On a routine delivery, a client asks Henning for help. Expecting to hear Miss Jensen wants her to find meat or kerosene, Henning is shocked when the older woman's frantically to find a person, a Jewish teenager Miss Jensen has been hiding, who has vanished without a trace from a secret room. Henning initially wants nothing to do with such a dangerous task, but is ultimately drawn to the web of mysteries and stunning revelations where there's only way out. As you guys may already know, I'm obsessed with Nazi Germany stories. I don't know what my deal is. I love them and they are so compelling and so just gripping. I love them. So this book is about Nazi Germany and we are following a girl who buys and sells black market goods in Nazi Germany to sell to people and one of her customers asked her to find a Jewish teenager she was hiding in a secret room in her house that has gone missing. So we are kind of following her story trying to find this missing Jewish teenager in Nazi Germany. We are kind of following her story of this secretive mission that she couldn't tell anybody about and this is such a compelling story I would definitely recommend it for anybody the next book I have is the dark world by Zach Biggins so anybody who knows me as a person knows I went through a Zach Biggins phase I wrote fan fictions about him in high school I can say that now because I don't like anybody from high school so hey people I grew into high school with I used to make fan fictions about Zach Biggins and I used to think he was beautiful what are you gonna do about it he was my wallpaper on my phone. But I'm not going to read the synopsis because this book is just about him growing up and liking ghosts and all that fun stuff. So I would recommend it because it's just an informative read, you know, and his cute self is in it a lot. So recommend that because look how beautiful this man is. Like, look at him. Oh, I still think he's beautiful, but I get scared really easily. So I used to watch Ghost Adventures with one of my friends and then I used to get really scared. So I don't watch it that much anymore. The next book I have is The American Royals by Catherine McKee. And now I'm going to read the back. That's look how beautiful this is. That is the most beautiful interior I've ever seen in my life. When America won the Revolutionary War, its people offered General George Washington a crown, and two and a half centuries later, the House of Washington still sits on the throne. Like most royal families, the Washingtons have their hair and a spare. Each child knows exactly what is expected of them, and there just aren't as many royals. They're American. The Princess Beatrice gets closer to becoming America's first queen regiment. The duty she has embraced her entire life suddenly feels stifling. Nobody cares about the spare except when she's breaking the rules, so Princess Samantha doesn't care much about anything either, except one boy who's off limits, and then there's Samantha's twin, Prince Jefferson. If he'd been born a generation earlier, he would have stood in first in line for the throne, but now new laws of secession made him third. Most of America adores their handsome prince, but two very different girls are preventing to capture his heart. I think this is such a good book to immerse yourself in because we are following the Washington family and this is what if America had become a monarchy. So George Washington was given a throne, he was a king instead of being a president. So we are kind of following this story of the Washington family as they're getting ready for their first queen and we are following a couple different people throughout the book and this is such a good book to immerse yourself in because we are in this new world of what if instead of that presidency we got the king and queen involved. And I think it will just help you kind of erase what's going on because this is such a different world. The next book I have is One of Us is Lying by Karen McMahons. The synopsis is... Pay close attention and you might solve this. On Monday afternoon, five students at Bellevue High walk into detention. Rowan, the Yale bound and never breaks a rule. Addie, the pitcher perfect homecoming princess. Nate is already on probation for dealing. Cooper is the all-star baseball pitcher. And Simon is the creator of Bayview High's notorious gossip app. Only... Simon never makes it out. Only Simon never makes it out of the classroom, and before the end of detention, Simon is dead, and according to the investigators, his death was not an accident. On Monday, he died, but on Tuesday, he planned to post juicy revolts about all of his high profile classmates, which makes all four of them suspects of his murder, or are they just perfect pasties of a killer who's on the loose. So in this book, we are following the story of five students who go to detention, and when they go to leave, one of their students is dead, and that student planned on leaking this huge article about all four of those students that were in there with him, and they are all four suspects. And we are kind of following that story. I think murder mystery stories are a great way 
way to get your mind off of what's going on because you have to follow it so intently to be able to understand what's going on. So I would highly recommend that book. The next book I have is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. I will never stop talking about this book because I love it. So the synopsis of this book is, in the year 2044, reality is an ugly place. The only time teenage Wade Watts really feels alive is when he's jacketed into the virtual utopia known as the Oasis. Wade's devoted his life to studying the puzzles hidden between the world's digital confines. Puzzles that are based on the creator's obsession with the pop culture of the decades past and promise massive power and fortune to whoever can unlock them. But when Wade stumbles upon the first clue, he finds himself basset by players willing to kill to take his ultimate prize. The race is on, and Wade's going to survive, he'll have to win, and confront the real world in ways he's been so desperate to escape. So I will forever recommend this book for anything you're trying to get your mind off of. We are completely immersed in this future world where people lived in stacks of trailers, and the world is just ugly, and poverty prevails, and this is such a good book to immerse yourself into, especially if you're into video games and fantasy worlds, and this is such a good book to immerse yourself into, and I would recommend it for anybody who loves video games and who loves this second world we could potentially have. The next book I have is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. The synopsis of this book is Stella Lane comes with algorithms to predict customer purchases, a job that's given her more money than she knows what to do with and a way less experience in the dating department than an average 30 year old. That doesn't help that Stella has Asperger's although the French kissing reminds her of a shark getting his teeth cleaned out by a pirate fish. Her conclusion is she needs a lot of practice with a professional which is why she hires Michael Plant fan. With the looks of a K-drama star and martial arts most to match, the Vietnamese Swedish stunner can't afford to turn down Stella's offer but when she comes up with a lesson plan he proves willing to help her check off all the boxes from floor play to more than missionary position. Before long Stella not only learns how to appreciate his kisses but to crap all the other things he's making her feel. But their nose dots as partnership starts making a strange kind of sense and the pattern that emerges will convince Stella that love is the best kind of logic. So in this book we are following Stella who is on the autism spectrum. We are following her and she has this awesome job but she's never had love so she hires Michael. Michael is hired to help her learn everything in the dating department from kissing to being intimate to dating and in the end they end up falling for each other and we are just following their goofy little story as she learns how to be a romantic partner and this is just such a good book especially if you want to learn more about the autism spectrum because I think learning new things along with a good story is just really good for everybody so I would highly recommend the next book I have is The Prisoner of Night and Fog by Anne Blankman I will never stop talking about this book because Nazi Germany is a great read the synopsis for this book is in 1930s Munich d danger learn lures behind dark corners and secrets are buried deep within the city but Gretchen Mueller who's grew up with the National Social Socialist Party under the wing of her uncle Dolph has been shielded by the side of society ever since her father traded his life for Dolph's and Gretchen his favorite his pet Uncle Dolph is none other than Adolf Hitler and Gretchen follows his every command until she meets a fearless handsome young Jewish reporter named Daniel Cohan who claims her father an adored Nazi murderer who's actually murdered by an unknown comrade. She should despise Daniel and yet she can't stop herself from listening to his story and she also can't resist the attraction between them despite everything she has been taught to believe. As Gretchen investigates the very people she's always considered friends, she must decide where her loyalties lie. Will she choose the safety of her former life as a Nazi darling or will she dare to dig up the truth even if it could get her and Daniel killed? I loved this book. I think it was a fantastic read. Definitely something we don't normally dive into when we think about Nazi Germany. Something that was really hard for me to read was how highly they talked about Adolf Hitler and how they talked about Jewish people and I know that's relevant to the story. I have issues reading that because I don't believe it if that makes sense but overall I could get past that and I did think it was a really good read. I love historical fiction. It is one of my favorite genres and I would highly recommend this book to anybody that likes historical fiction and likes Nazi Germany stories because this was such a good book. The next book I have is The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamter. The synopsis is, what happens when life interrupts all your plans? Cal Lewis is on his way to becoming the famous social media journalist with almost half a million followers on his Splash Band app, but when his pilot father is selected for a nationally publicized NASA mission on to Mars within days, Cal and his parents leave Brooklyn and all his future plans behind. In his new home of Houston, Texas, Cal is thrust into the media circus and suddenly his life is more like a reality TV show and he and his parents struggle to play the perfect American family. When Cal meets Leon, whose mother is another astronaut, he finds himself falling head over heels. Cal and Leon become an oasis for each other amid their hectic new lives and his frenzy around the mission mounts. Cal suspects there are secrets being kept from the families and the country that could change everything. Can he find out the truth without hurting the people? who have become most important to him. This is another gay love story because for some reason I keep getting recommended all the gay love stories and they all are fantastic. So in this book we are following Cal. Cal is in New York. He is a social media star. He does news that all the young people enjoy. When his father is chosen to be one of the pilots on an astronaut mission to Mars, he is uprooted from New York and Houston within days of the news. He meets Leon. Leon's mother is a fellow astronaut pilot and he falls in love with Cal and they try to keep their relationship a secret because they are gay lovers and they really don't want this to overshadow their parents. So this is such a cute little story about Cal and Leon and how we're following their love story, following their family ties and it is just such a good book that I would recommend. The next book I have is 
Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie, mm, cannot say her last name. Um, the synopsis for this book is, he murdered women in cold blood, he terrorized the entire city, he talked to those of us who hunted him down, but despite all these horrors, in the end, I could not deny it, I was the girl who loved the Ripper. Really like stories that when people are in love with serial killers, should I be ashamed of that? Probably, but I'm not. But this book was so good, like even following her story of being in love with Jack the Ripper, I am a fan. Hunting Prince Dracula by the same author that I can't say. And the synopsis of this book is, a man impaled by a sharp wooden stake, a young chamber woman drained of her blood, they say it's Prince Dracula, arisen from the dead. They, I say it's the living, not the dead. We should fear them all. History. Historical fiction. I will never say no to them. I would recommend them both. End of story. Finally, the last book I have is The Conjure Women. Ithaca Etikora. If I'm not saying that right, tell me. <laughs> the synopsis for this book is, Conjure Woman is a sweeping story that brings the world of the South before and after the Civil War vividly to life, spanning generations. It explores the lives of three unforgettable women. So this book, we are following three African Americans before and right after the Civil War, which was a crucial time for African American women and men throughout the United States. And we are following their story of freedom. We are following these three women who are in southern United States and they find this girl with mystical powers and they need to keep it a secret. It would threaten their freedom and this is such a good book and I said it once, I'll say it again, historical fiction is my favorite genre in the world. Alright guys, that is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed all my recommendations on books you should read while you're in quarantine. These books will definitely help you get out of your reading slump, get out of the world how it is right now because I know it's a scary place. All of the books I mentioned will be linked down below and an Amazon link on where you can purchase them. As usual, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think I might have said that already, did I? If you did like this video, I really hope you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you leave a comment down below and tell me what your favorite book was and if you'll pick any of these up because I'd love to hear it. Still leave a comment and tell me if you like this video and what video you would like to see next. I hope you guys are all enjoying the quarantine readathon. I really hope you guys join me on the readathon because it's going to be such a great time. I have a couple people doing it with me and I know it's going to be so great to see what you guys are all reading. It lasts throughout the whole month of May. Free to join anytime you want. You don't even have to do all the prompts. Just a few of them is great. I just want to encourage more people to read and more people to read the good books that I So I will see you guys in my next video which will be my first vlog for the quarantine. I'm so excited to... I'm so excited to share it with you guys, and I will see you guys next video. Bye. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her.